Today I'm eating only Filipino food for 24 hours and I know it's gonna be a lot of delicious food. It's breakfast time. So for breakfast, I didn't wanna go to a restaurant like I'm doing for lunch, merienda and dinner. So I decided to take a risk and cook tapsilog. Tapsilog is a traditional Filipino breakfast dish and there are so many recipes, but in the one I chose, I marinated thinly sliced beef overnight in pineapple juice, soy sauce, a ton of garlic and seasoning. And I used day old rice to make garlic fried rice, which I topped with a fried egg. I'm really excited to try that because this was an easy meal to make and it smells so good. So let's dive in. Mm. Mm. Wow, the marinated meat has so much flavor and is super tender. And the sweetness of the pineapple juice is balanced by the soy sauce. And of course you can never have too much garlic. Wow, what a cool way to start the day. Overall, I'm very satisfied of the taste of my cooking here. I'm gonna rate this an eight because it's the first time I'm making this and I'm sure it can be made better, but it does taste really good. Wow, I have so much food. Before I show you everything, there is one thing I need to do. I need to eat the ube ice cream right now because the lady at the restaurant told me it will melt if I ate it after my meal. So cute. Oh my God. I love ube. I'm like, I'm so excited every time I eat ube. If you've never eaten ube before, it's also called purple yam. It's a naturally sweet and naturally purple vegetable. I had such a strong sense of urgency to eat that ice cream that I'm sitting on the ground in my own home right now. I'll set the table later for all the good food we have for lunch. So let's try it out. Oh wow. I was expecting something really good, but this really blows my mind. It's this really super soft, super sweet, and really melts slowly in your mouth. And can we talk about how beautiful this dish is with the beautiful purple color and the teeny tiny cookie. If their ice cream is that good, I'm really excited to try the rest. Wow, the cookie still tastes like ube. This is a pure 10 out of 10. I want and I need more ube in my life. I love that I got so much food. Carrie got three different dishes at my local field in a restaurant. This one is kare kare. It is a beef stew with cashew sauce with veggies like eggplant, bok choy, and green beans topped with a fermented shrimp paste. And we also have rice with onions in it. Let me mix everything well. Mm, it smells so good. Wow, this sauce looks so delicious. Okay, let's go for it. Mm. Wow, this is incredible. The beef is super tender and you can really feel that this meat has been cooked slowly and for a long time. You also can taste the crunchiness of the cashews and it has a very soft, almost sweet taste. This is a dish I could eat every single day, no questions. Super tasty, really fresh. I'm gonna give it a 9 out of 10. Next up, we have the tinola. Chicken, spinach, and another veggie I've never seen before in a broth made of ginger and lemongrass. It's also served with a side of jasmine rice with deep fried onions. It just smells so good thanks to the ginger and lemongrass. Also, this being a broth, it makes for the perfect comfort food. Okay, let's try it out. Mm. This tastes like the perfect food someone will bring to your home when you're sick. So delicious. Okay, now let's try the mystery veggie. Mm. Okay, so I've been googling the mystery veggie and it's called sayote. So super happy to have discovered a new veggie. Let's try the chicken now. Mm. Wow, the chicken meat is so soft and so juicy. You can really tell that it has been cooked in the broth. Overall, this dish is a perfect balance of textures and of flavors, with the chicken being super soft, the veggies and the sayote giving it a bit of a crunchy texture, and of course, the ginger giving it a bit of a kick to warm you up. And I'm gonna give it a 7.5. We have two more dishes left for lunch, and the next one is called Bicol Express. This is a spicy dish made of pork, coconut cream, red chili pepper, and white rice and green beans. This dish is also served with a condiment called bagum made of fermented shrimp paste. I think this is gonna be spicy and my spice tolerance is not the best, so let's see what happens here. Mm. Oh wow, it is really spicy. The coconut cream and the extra hot chili pepper balance each other. And wow, this is so hot and spicy. Since, you know, we're not in the Philippines, I'm sure they take the spice level a few notches down. I can't even imagine what the real deal in the Philippines is like. Overall, really good dish, but too spicy for me. I will not be able to eat that every day, so I give it a seven. And now let's end on a sweet note with this calamai. This one is made with coconut milk, sticky rice flour, and topped with caramels and almonds. Right away you notice it's super sticky texture balanced by the crunchiness of the almonds. 
Mm. This is the best dessert to eat after eating spicy food. If I have to compare it with the ube ice cream, it's obviously a tiny bit less good, so I have to give it a seven as well. So now it's time for afternoon snacks or merienda. I'm sure it's gonna be my favorite meal of the day because I love trying all types of snacks. So here I came back to my local Filipino restaurant and I got a few different things. The first one I'm gonna try is lumpias. Lumpias are Filipino spring rolls. There are so many different recipes, but this one is made of pork, celery, and and carrots. Then it is wrapped in a lumpia wrapper and deep fried. And I'm super happy because they had banana ketchup, so I'm so excited to try it. What I feel makes this food super unique to me is the crisps. Mm. This is so good. It's unlike anything I've ever tried before. This day is so delicious. Can we pause and talk a tiny bit about the banana ketchup? It's so different from normal ketchup. I was not expecting anything from just plain old ketchup. This is really blowing my mind. The lumpias are really good and crispy and no wonder it's a staple of Filipino cuisine. This makes for a really easy and fast snack. So I'm gonna give it an 8.5 out of 10. Next up we have the cheese sticks. And this is cheddar cheese wrapped in lumpia rolls and deep fried as well. I sense a trend here for the snacks and I really love it. Here as well I've been given a choice of different sauces and I chose a sweet and sour sauce so let's try it out. Mmm, deep fried cheese is always the best idea. This is crazy good. It's the perfect afternoon snack. And the sauce is super delicious as well and tastes really homemade. The cheese roll are really extra cheesy and also super, super crunchy. The strong taste of the cheese combines perfectly with the sweet and sour sauce. This is such a perfect comfort food, so I'm gonna give it an eight out of 10. And before we eat the last snack, I feel we have to try this juice. This is calamansi juice, which is a tiny side for us from the Philippines. And I've heard this is pretty iconic, so I'm very excited to try it. Mm. Wow, this is super fruity. I feel it's like between an orange, a lemon, and a mandarin. Okay, next up we have vegetable fritters. And I, I know I'm gonna say that wrong, but this is called ukoi. Here we have three different veggies of sweet potato, carrot, and zucchini. All of this is beautifully deep fried into a fritter. Super excited to try it. As for the sauce, I've been given vinegar dipping sauce. So let's dive in. Mm, wow. It is so crunchy and so sweet. It combines perfectly with a vinegar dipping sauce, which is actually super peppery and even a tiny bit spicy. So now it's dinner time and I came back to the exact same place. There's actually only one Filipino restaurant in my whole town and it's located five minutes away from my house. So it was really easy. For dinner, I have two dishes I was really, really waiting for. The first one being chicken adobo. This is chicken that has been marinated in soy sauce and cane sugar vinegar along with other spices and of course garlic. It is served with delicious looking potatoes and of course rice with onions. So I'm excited to try this one because it's the number one dish I've heard about when I think about the Philippines. So let's dive in. Mmm, wow, the chicken is so tender and so tasty. No wonder this is one of the top dishes the Philippines is known for. This is so good and I could eat that every single day, which is a big rating criteria of mine. So I think I'm gonna give this dish a nine. It's just so good. Next up, we have mango. Mango is a lentil stew with coconut milk, ginger and lemongrass. It's also served with shiitake mushrooms, green beans and pumpkin. Just from the look of it, I know I'm gonna like it. It looks like the Filipino version of a a dish my grandma used to make when I was a kid. Mmm, well, this is so tasty and the coconut milk and the lentils go perfectly with each other and that's a combination I had never tried before. Wow, the mushrooms are just so good as well and they go perfectly with the lentils. We're ending the day on the best meal possible. But this is not the last thing we're gonna eat because we still have dessert. So I guess in terms of rating, this has to be pretty high. I'm gonna give this a 9.5. We have our dessert and here we have a delicious looking cassava cake. The ingredients are very simple. It's cassava, coconut, and grated coconut on top. What seems super cool about this cake is the texture and the look of it. It seems both super moist and super fluffy. Okay, I'm really excited for this one because the Filipino desserts are really next level. Mmm, this is so good as well. I just love anything with cassava, so that's an easy 10. Wow, this was such a delicious day. I can't believe all the good food I got to eat. Overall, I have to say I'm super impressed with Filipino food. Okay, now it's time for me to finish my cake, so bye for now.